Merry Christmas, guys, and Happy New Year, too. <laughs> nah, just kidding. It's uh, spring break, so I'm home again, and uh, I have a very busy agenda this time. Uh, I have a lot to do in this next week and a half that I'm home, uh, which uh, my main priority is actually getting the 210 back together, but I'm going to make that in another video. I, I guess this one's going to get uploaded first. Uh, I had a couple guys asking what I was going to do with the X570, because it's only shown up in a video or two. Um, I had a few guys asking, you know, are you going to get a sleeve hitch for it? Are you going to get this? Are you going to get that accessory for it? Um, I wasn't looking to spend a whole lot of money on it since it's just a mo tractor and a, and a bit of a yard tug. But there were a couple accessories I wanted to get for it um, that my dad uh, didn't order because he didn't need them. I forgot to mention it to him when he was at the dealer placing the order for the tractor. Um, but I just bought a couple accessories uh, to install myself. And I'm going to... Uh, I haven't started the X570 in about a month and a half. It's in the shed. So uh, I already opened up the shed door. So for the sake of time, uh, let's go cold start it real quick. And then I'll pull it in here and we'll get started. I'll show you some of the accessories I got for it. She does puff a little bit of white smoke on startup. I hear that's normal for the Kawasaki's and I'm not sure why. And they're also very cold blooded. I have to mess with the choke a lot to cold start it, which is kind of kind of strange. But I mean, the engine does have low hours, so. And for some reason, it likes to surge until it's warmed up. But like I said, uh, I asked around because this is the first Kawasaki B twin I've owned. Um, so I don't know too too much about them. I don't really know the nature of these engines, so I had to ask around. But. They're definitely a good engine. John Deere wouldn't use them if they weren't a good engine and they were, you know, problematic. So, let me pull this outside real quick. Let it warm up for a minute, then I'll pull it in the garage and I'll show you some of the accessories that I bought for this machine. Okay, so I uh, got the machine inside. I had to shut the door. It's it's cold, and I honestly don't feel like working with the door open today. Um, I had to sort through the, the boxes and figure out which was which. Uh, but these are the three accessories I bought. Um, they weren't cheap. I kind of wish we ordered the tractor with them in the first place. Um, and like I said, I didn't really want to do too many upgrades to this tractor because I don't want to... I don't, well, one, I don't want to avoid the warranty in any way, and two, uh, it's just a mowing tractor, so I figured I'd get a couple accessories for it, um, that would spruce up the look and, you know, have a, have an important role, uh, it would protect the tractor, especially, uh, since I mow so much, and uh, I'm going to be using this thing a lot. Okay, so uh, here's the three things I got for this tractor. The first one's a brush guard. Uh, pretty popular accessory for the X300 and X500 series. I've always liked the look of them. I thought they always made a nice touch. Um, they give it that aggressive, uh, you know, garden tractor look. Um, I put one on the 210. Uh, it's not an official deer one. It's made by Al's Welding, uh, or Al Z Welding, Al Zimmerman. Uh, he made him. He, ma he makes these himself. Uh, it makes them, they make a really nice touch, so they look very good, and they're heavy duty, and uh, it's a weight bracket too, so I use it for pulling, and I can use it for, you know, going in the woods and stuff like that, too. I don't have to worry about the front end getting all busted up. Um, and John Deere offers a brush guard as an option for the Select Series tractor, so I figured, uh, and I always like the look of them, so I figured, you know what, why don't I buy one? So I spent the money on the brush and guard. And then the next accessory I bought was a front weight bracket and front bumper. It's actually a two-in-one piece. Um, this is an option on the X570, I believe, but, uh, it comes standard on the X580 and X590. Um, it holds, I think it holds four suitcase weights, four or five, I'm not sure. Um, but the heavier duty, like the higher end X500 series come standard with this, uh, front weight bracket and bumper. The X570 being the base model just comes with this smooth little bumper here. Um, I mean, it's all right, but I figure, you know what, if I'm using this for... Um, uh, if I'm going to, like, tow the cart and stuff with this, uh, I'd rather have, I'd rather be able to hold the extra weight on the front just in case. And even if I didn't have the brush guard, the, uh, the weight bracket actually protrudes out in front of the frame a lot further than that stock, uh, bumper does. So I figured it would also provide 
a bit of protection from debris and um, brush and things like that. So, uh, and there's a little bit of debate whether these two can be used together or whether you can only have one or the other installed. Um, but we're going to test that and just to see. Um, they should both fit. I don't see why they wouldn't. Um, and then the final thing I, I bought was actually, uh, this is actually not a, not an OEM option. Uh, one of the things I don't like about the X500 series, for what they're worth, they don't come with tail lights. They just have these little, you know, reflectors. Um, they look pretty sharp, but for what the tractor's worth, they should have, you know, full wired up tail lights and everything. Because, you know, believe it or not, I do mow in the dark a lot with this, so the, uh, the extra lighting really does help. And the cool thing about this kit is it comes with a uh, a nine way flasher relay. So basically, there's nine different there's like nine different settings, and you can adjust it um, to flash in a certain pattern. Um, this is a very professionally made kit. Like I said, it's not OEM, but it's a very high quality kit. It's made by a guy named Jeff Walters. Um, he's been making them for the X500 series over the years. And since the, the harnesses and the tail light or the uh, reflectors and all that stuff are the same between the old X500 series and the new X500 series, everything's interchangeable. Um, these are actually, these two brackets here are actually the same design from the old X500 series, believe it or not. Everything's interchangeable. Um, and uh, so, like I was saying, this guy Jeff has been building these kits for a very long time. They're not very cheap, but they're very high quality made as you can as you can tell and since i'm horrible with making my own wiring i figured i'd uh order one of these kits from him um it comes with the actual lights and everything like i said it has the built-in flasher relay i'm gonna get everything unpacked here um he typed up the instructions and all that stuff too but as you can see it works from the, the x500 series and the um presumably the x300 series as well so I'll have to read through the instructions and figure out how to mount them up. But for now, let's get started. The, I'll take the, exi the existing bumper off. I have to read the deer instructions. As you can see, the instructions come with each accessory. Um, I have to read through the instructions, and then I'll, uh, I'll start taking this existing front bumper off and get everything else mounted up. Well, I got the first part done. Uh, it was a little more tedious and took more time than I would have liked, but uh, I removed the screws and got the old bumper off, as you can see. I still have to take the the pivot or the studs off. Um, those are the pivot points for the hood. I have to take those off and swap them over. Um, but uh, if you're ever going to do this upgrade, you're going to swap from a, a regular bumper to a weight bracket. Be careful because. Uh, the mounting screws that the kit provides are actually self-tapping screws, half-inch head, and then there's um, there's a couple little 8mm screws. Um, for some reason, for whatever reason, the weight bracket uses different mounting holes than the, um, the original bumper does on these, and I have no idea why. Um, so when you go to install the weight bracket, you have to actually tap the new threads in for the new screws yourself. Um, so just be careful of that. Uh, you can see there's actually there's four half inch bolts on each side and there's a little eight millimeter one on on the top and the middle um but just for the time being i only put the two corner ones in and tighten them down um if you know for some reason i decide to take the weight bracket off which i'm not really planning to but just in case i have to for whatever reason um i decided to just put the two in because trying to self tap all eight of those screws in there is um kind of a pain and it should, it should hold on there for now. But like I said, if I ever decide to take it off, it shouldn't be too hard to do. Um, and then the only other problem I had was I had to reuse the original bolt, uh, tensioner bolt for the um, the lift assist spring. I don't know if you can see down there. That really long bolt there that goes into the spring. Um, the kit that the, or the bolt that the kit gave you, you see there, is actually too short to reach through the, um, the front axle support and thread into the end of the spring they they want you to uh, you can't see it here now but they want you to thread it in right there you can see where that bolt head and washer is there's a bushing that goes in there too they want you to thread that um through the axle support the original um the, the way it was set up with the original bumper was the the mounting bolt actually 
came out the front bumper and then it went straight back through the axle support all the way to the helper spring, um, which is why the bolt is so long. Um, but with the weight bracket, they give you a shorter bolt because it's only supposed to bolt from the axle support back. The bolt doesn't actually go through the front bracket because it sticks out further. So they give you a shorter bolt. Um, but I couldn't get the bolt to reach, so I just used the original bolt and I threaded it in there. Uh, it should hold for now. I may have to mess with the tension a little bit because apparently from what I've read, once you install that longer bolt and you install the front weight bracket, you don't... You're not supposed to adjust the helper spring tension from uh, from the front of the tractor anymore. You have to do it from the side here, like on the frame through the frame rails, um, which isn't a big deal. I mean, uh, it, the, it did change the tension, or the, uh, yeah, it did change the tension of the lift spring a little bit. Um, so I have to put a little more effort in when I push the pedal to lift and uh, lower the deck. But... That's not really a concern for me. It's not like I have to lift the deck all the time, so it's really no big deal. Um, those are just a couple things to be aware of if you're going to do this. Um, if you're going to do this upgrade, uh, the mounting bolts are soft tapping, so you have to go slow and make sure you don't strip the threads on the screws or the uh, holes on the weight bracket. You don't. It doesn't thread into the frame. It only threads into the holes on the weight bracket behind the frame rail. So just be careful of that. Uh, I'll probably, at some point in the future, I'll probably go ahead and put the rest of the self-tapping screws in. But for now, it should be secured as it is. So that's the first part done. Next part, uh, installing the uh, brush guard. This should be pretty straightforward. All right, so here's the first look at the X570 with the newly installed brush guard and front uh, weight bracket. Um, I think it really makes a difference. It's a sharp addition to any X500 or even any X300 series tractor. Um, now, of course, the X570 is like the bare bones model of the current X500 series. It's not like the, the fully loaded multi-terrain X590 or X580 with the aggressive tires and all that stuff. Um, but the brush guard is interchangeable between the X300 and the X500 series frames, so uh, I think it makes a nice addition to any of those select series tractors, like I said. Um, like I said before, I've got one on my 210. It's not factory, but um, it honestly does make a nice touch, and it serves a couple different purposes, because I could easily, if I need to, I could easily hang my suitcase weights off of it without a problem. Um, if I have to tow something heavy, because you never know. I mean, these these X500 series have a very capable K72 transaxle, so there's no doubt that I'll be pulling something heavy at some point. Like even if I have to pull a 210 around or something, who knows? Um, but yeah, I think it makes a really nice touch. Uh, now, never having worked on an X series before, it was a little bit of a puzzle, a little bit of a challenge. Um, like I said, the biggest problem I had, uh, well, the first thing I had to do was install the front weight bracket. The biggest problem I had with that was installing the tensioner bolt for the, um, the lift assist spring and then the self-tapping screws that bolt the, uh, the weight bracket to the frame. You have to be careful when you tap those threads in there or else you could strip them out. Um, it just takes a little bit of fo extra force and then you can drive them right in. Uh, at some point, I'm going to get around to installing the rest of those mounting bolts. I just put the corner ones in to put it in there for now and see how it looks. But it definitely makes a nice touch. Um, so, the only thing with the brush guard is, like I said before, you have to... Uh, every time you want to open the hood, like when you go to check the oil before you cold start it, you have to pull the pin out, slide the whole rod out, and then tilt the, tilt the brush guard down. Um, but that doesn't really bother me. That's not too... It's an easy habit to pick up on. Um, so yeah, those are the two noticeable additions that I've added to it. And then the, the last thing I have to do is install these tail lights, these uh, LED tail lights. So uh, but I'll read up on that and then we'll get these wired up and uh, see how they work.
pretty cool, huh? <laughs> okay, so uh, I just got done installing the tail lights. Um, it wasn't too bad of an installation. Uh, the guy Jeff Walters who created the kit, uh, he included a very thorough and very thought out um, uh, list of instructions for installing these tail lights. And it is a very high quality kit. I'm going to include some pictures in the video if I can. Um, and I'll tell you what, for being an aftermarket kit, it is, it is very high quality. And I was very impressed with the um, just with the quality of it overall. It wasn't like a cheap, tacky little kit. Um, and it was fairly straightforward and somewhat easy to install. Uh, like I said before, having never worked on an X500 series um, or any... John Deere of this caliber before um, I had to figure out you know how to, how some things came apart and uh, I really got a good in-depth look at my machine from uh, underneath and uh, under the fenders inside the frame rails and everything um, but it was definitely worth the investment like I said before the uh, the tail light kit is not cheap um, but I think it adds a cool effect and uh, for what the tractors worth it definitely should have come with these in the first place um, so this tail light kit basically just wires into the existing uh, headlight harness. Um, I'll show you in a minute. And it has a tiny little flasher with, I believe, six or eight different settings. Um, I'm just going to leave the lights on. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so to, get, to take the brush guard off, all you have to do is just pull the... I already pulled the one pin out. It's kind of hard to do this with one hand. You just slide the rod out. Fold the brush guard down, and then just lift the hood. Um, so, most of the work was done uh, in this little compartment right here. It requires removing this plastic panel right here. All it takes is a, uh, a special socket to get that 8 millimeter bolt out, and then you have to mess around with it a little bit before it pops out. Um, you have to cut the uh, coating off of the wires cut like two inches off as recommended and then you put these little T taps these little T wire taps into the um, into the existing headlight wires this is the very end of the headlight harness you, the yellow wire is your hot wire and then the black wire there is the ground and then you just hook the little T connectors up and my phone's a little blurry um, you just hook the T connectors up and then you hook up the wiring harness that runs to the uh, runs all the way to the back and uh, Probably the easiest part was popping out the old reflectors and popping the new ones in. Um, when the lights are turned off, there's absolutely no way to tell the difference. You would never guess that these were actual lights and not uh, reflectors. Because um, they look exactly the same. Uh, and then, under underneath there, I'll, I'll include some pictures. I'm not getting good lighting under here. But uh, underneath there, you have to run the wires. And uh, the kit included a couple little adhesive wire guides to go under the fenders. Um, just to keep them out of the way because you don't want the wires getting caught up in the wheels, obviously. So you have to basically route the, the wires over the fuel tank. Um, and then down, you, it basically ties in or uh, ties into the uh, the existing wiring harness. Uh, runs up the frame rail and then arrives up here just behind the engine. And uh, the uh, hot and the ground connectors, like I said, hook into the existing headlight harness. And then right here... Uh, is the controller for the flasher. Um, very tiny little circuit, but it's amazing how many different light choices it gives you. Uh, the way I wired it in, it's, it's upside down, but I, I zip-tied everything in there. I used, uh, instead of using the small zip-ties included in Jeff's kit, I used my own zip-ties because um, I wanted to tidy it up a little bit. Uh, it even has an inline fuse right here with a little cover over it, which is really cool. Um, so that can be replaced when needed. Uh, but I ended up zip-tying it and just just... To keep it out of the way of some of the linkages, like right here you have your parking brake and cruise control linkage, and I had to be careful running the wires down along the frame to make sure they weren't rubbing the brake pedal or the um, cruise control pedals. Um, but it all went in fairly easily, and then like I said, you just you have three buttons here, one's for light, one's uh, to change the speed of the flash, and then one's for mode, um, which basically changes the pattern of the flash. Uh, I have it on like the basic flash right now, but there's all different kinds. Uh, I'm still learning how to how to change through them. And then if you hit this light button, it just changes from flasher to solid light, and it also adjusts the brightness of the light. So uh, that's pretty cool. 
uh, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to show you a couple different patterns here that it'll do. So there's one. <laughs> All I have to do is just pop the hood open and press the little button there, and it'll change it. Might be a little hard to tell on camera. Um, it's so cool how many different features this tiny little harness has wired into it. Very professional kit. I don't see why this couldn't be adapted to, you know, an older garden tractor or uh, an ATV or something, something else. Not just the X500 series. It was designed to go on the X500 series, but uh, I don't see why it wouldn't fit on any others. So we're just kind of flipping through the modes here. I'm showing you. Um, it really depends on what you're doing. Like this particular flash, you'd probably use that for uh, if you're out mowing by the road or plowing snow by the road if you live on a busy road. Um, so, yeah, that's basically the gist of it. Um, I've been very excited to install this kit. Um, once I found out that the X500 series didn't come with tail lights, I was kind of disappointed. So I started looking around to see if there was a... Uh, See if someone made an aftermarket kit, and sure enough, this guy Jeff Walters, um, his own little private business or whatever you want to call it, he uh, he designed them. He designed and sells these kits himself. So, uh, kudos to you, Jeff. Thank you for a, a very high quality kit, and I would highly recommend this to anyone looking to upgrade their lights on an X300 or X500 series. Um, definitely worth the investment. So, sorry this video was a little bit long. One of my uh, one of my New Year's resolutions, if you couldn't tell, was trying to trying to shorten my videos up a little bit. Um, so I just I wanted to make a video for those of you guys who wanted to see the X570. Uh, put the brush guard back in here. I just wanted to make a video for you guys who wanted to see this tractor since it's only shown up in one other video, one or two other videos, and I haven't obviously it hasn't been getting much use because I've been away from home. Um, but pretty soon it'll be time to start mowing again. I can't believe how quick spring's coming up. So, <sighs> alright guys, thanks for watching. Uh, for those of you wondering, uh, what I was going to do to this X570, that's pretty much it. Uh, since we're just using it for mowing. So, the brush guard, the front weight bracket, and the uh, LED tail light kit. And I also included a seat cover. Just a precautionary measure. Especially on a brand new tractor, because you don't want the seat to get torn up. Um, alright. Thank you guys for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. And uh, who knows, maybe before long I'll start getting some GoPro uh, mowing videos with this tractor. That'll be exciting.